kind enough to join us right now. So let's get to him. Mr. Ryan Darth Bader. There he is. Hello, Ryan. How are you? What's going on, buddy? How are you? It, it's it, it's all good. Uh, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, congratulations on the win. Big spot for you. Big moment for you. Would you say maybe not the opponent was the toughest, you know, skill wise, but like just the circumstances, one of the toughest of your career, because it did seem like everyone wanted the storybook ending for him. And you're such a nice guy yeah. and everyone loves you and respects you, but you were just put in almost an impossible spot. Did you feel that pressure as well? Yeah, a little bit. You know, it was one of those things where I didn't have a, a lot to win in that fight. You know, yeah, going out there and, and beating Fedor or whatnot. But, you know, I, I beat him in 35 seconds the first time. You know, you have people come up. You're like, oh, you're going to smash him, this and that. You know, he's not what he used to be. And that adds a lot of pressure for sure. You know, um, even some of the executives, you know, not only that, you know, if Fedor is going out, say he, he beats me, right? And then that belt, yeah. he's retiring. That belt's gone. So they're in a the pickle too. You know, and so you start thinking about like, do you know what happens if I end up somehow losing? You know, it just felt like a lot of pressure was on my back. So to go in there and and do what I did, which we were planning on, but to get it done, it was it was one of those fights um, that was kind of nice to get over with. You know, big platform on CBS, Fedor, lots to lose, but we got it done. Did you not want the fight to happen? Like, would you have preferred something else, considering all that? Um, yeah, at the beginning. You know, they were talking about Fedor, and I was like, why? Like yeah. I said, it's kind of a lose, lose situation. Um, you know, I, I didn't know it was going to be on CBS and all that kind of stuff. So it, it, I got more excited about it as it went on. and kind of heard, hey, we're on CBS for the first time. You know, I started thinking, like, all right, who else? There was probably going to be a rematch anyway, you know, with either, like, Linton Vassell or something or Madofsky. And so I said, you know, why not? I'm like, I started getting more excited about it. And then uh, um, anytime you can get in there with Fedor. It's a cool experience, you know, and, and, um, he was always pretty vocal about that in the media. He wanted me for his last fight and, you know, Fedor kind of gets what he wants in, in that aspect. And so, um, got more serious talks about it. And then, then I started getting excited about it and, and, uh, um, ended up being a good time and, and, you know, just kept my head down, did my job and didn't let the outside stuff kind of play in at all. Did it last longer than you expected? Of course, the first fight, 35 seconds, you know, you, you never know if a fight's going to be that short. But I actually thought, you know, I'm not trying to be disrespectful towards him, but yeah. I was actually surprised that it went 2.30 and that he was able to hang on, just given, you know, his age and everything like that in the layoff. Were you surprised? Um, I knew, I mean, it was first round. I, I knew I knew going into that fight, you know, that as a, the rounds went on, it was only in my favor. You know, and, and we planned. I don't, I didn't go in there expecting to knock him out again in 30 seconds, you know. Um, so we were ready for a hard fight, but it was kind of one of those things where I knew going in, it's either if he's going to win, I think he had one way to win, knock me out in the first round. If it went past the first round, it was going to be done. But, yeah, I mean, he was he was pretty crafty, you know, on the ground. You know, he, he could have take, taken a way out, and he kept defending himself and fighting. You know, I was hitting him with elbows, obviously punches and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, he went out fighting for sure but yeah it just felt like I saw everything in there you know obviously he's throwing those big right hands and that's what we were most concerned with and uh you know end up hitting him uh with that right hand put him down i knew i had him from there once he was on the ground i, I knew he was gonna finish it did he did he tag you at all did you feel anything from him no i mean like i said we we're just my first fight i took away like going and finding that line with him, you know, cause he, he loves the blitz, you know, throw a, a hard combo, um, you know, and if you watch his other fights, like his past two fights with rampage and Tim, you know, he's fighting guys that don't move, right. That stand in front of them. Hands are kind of down and, you know, being in there and having him throw those right hands at me, I was like, if these connect, they're going to put anybody out, you know? So it was going in there is his movement, you know, being fast and all that. And I felt like I could see everything. I could see his muscles tense up right before he's about to throw that right hand to get out of the way. Um, hit him with a few jabs, which I see his face, you know, I cut him open. I could just see in his eyes, he, you know, it was just too fast for him. And so, uh, I just cut my time to put him down. I know you wanted to close the deal, but when you're raining down the elbows, the punches, when he's on the ground, is there a part of you that's like, I hope this ends soon? Cause you know, he, he is fatal. Yeah. He's a legend. He's 46. You don't really yeah. enjoy that. Right. No, not at all. And uh, I love that dude, man. He's always been so respectful. And, you know, I remember I've never met him before and we were in the Grand Prix tournament, you know, and 
we kind of did like a little group thing. We all got together and, and he came over, you know, came up, introduced himself, gave him a hug. And he's always been super cool and respectful. That's what was, was nice about this fight, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I could have, I threw a couple elbows and I could have kept elbowing them, but I was like, I will, you know, switch the punches here. And that's why I was like, come on, dude, just pull over, give it to me. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Of the day you know i didn't call him out he called me out right uh, i mean i had a job to do went in there and did it and then uh yeah it's a little bittersweet for sure you know at the end you're like that's a legend he's and he's done and and Beltor did an awesome job with cbs bringing all those legends in the cage and sending them off the right way what was that like for you to see all those legends in there they're there for him you're the guy that just beat him it's a bit of a you know somber moment but you know i yeah. think they yeah. he was happy you know like you're the guy that kind of ruined the party what, what was that like because I, I know you know a lot of those guys and you you know they're all cool with you yeah and i just felt bad like there you are with your wife and your team and i'm like man i wonder what ryan's thinking about all of this yeah no, i thought it was super cool you know i i knew my role you know in this fight i knew that look if i'm watching Pedro's last fight I'm rooting for him, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I knew, but I'm not going to go in there and roll over for him. Right. And, and let him take my belt and retire. So I, I just went in there and did a job knowing I was going to, you know, it was Fedor's week, Fedor's night, you know, um, but it was cool seeing all those legends in there, you know, and they invited me in, um, at the end there, uh, of those guys and they're all, all good people. Um, but it, I thought it was pretty special, you know, to have all those guys in there and, you know, Fedor seemed relieved and happy after yeah. the fight was done. You know, like, I'm done. You know, that's the last for me. And I don't have to, you know, he talked about he can't send up to the pressure anymore. You know, anybody have been doing this a long time. And, you know, I'm sure he doesn't need to fight. You know, so he kind of went in there like, let's just get this over with kind of deal. Mm. Did he say anything to you privately? Um, I mean, We just kind of, we hugged and, you know, said thank you and all that kind of stuff. But, um we didn't talk too much after. Okay. Any of the legends say anything to you? Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I know I pretty uh, kind of, we talked a little bit and they were kind of, you know, I was talking to Mark Coleman, you know, at the hotel afterwards and you oh, know, he was talking about his fight with Fedor and all that kind of stuff. And he kind of came up and he was like, you know, and I'm, I'm friends with him, but he's like, Hey, you know, I had to go, you know, I was rooting for Fedor, you know, yeah. hope you, I'm like, dude, I get it, man. Yeah. I was like, I would be too, you know, I just had a job to do and go in there and, 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 uh, and then, like I said, he's the one that wanted this fight. You know, right. it's not like I'm trying to call him out, actively seek that fight, you know? So, um, yeah, it was a good night. It was just kind of one of those nights that, you know, I knew it was all about Fedor. Um, um you know, do my job. Obviously he's not the biggest heavyweight, but I'm just wondering if you are surprised that you've had this amount of success at heavyweight in Bellator because correct me if I'm wrong it was never really your intention to be a heavyweight it was just more you were the champ Grand Prix opportunity but now you've had a pretty damn long tenure as heavyweight champ does this surprise you yeah, yeah a little bit you know when I was in the UFC my coach Aaron Simpson who's, who also fought in the UFC you know he he always told me he's like yeah, I think you'd be really good at heavyweight you know and it was just an unknown and you know he, he kept talking to me about it I'm like yeah yeah but when I came to Bellator and had the opportunity to do that Grand Prix, I was like, I don't know how these guys, how hard they hit, how strong they are. I don't, I've never been in there with the heavyweight. And, um, I think me true own was, you know, cause I fought King Mo who was pretty much a toe fiver first round. But when I fought Matt meets your own, who's a big fast heavyweight, I was like, okay, you know, I belong here. And obviously I was jumping back and forth. And then, um, I kind of let my ego get in the way of like, Oh, I can, I can do it. I can cut this weight. You know, my last two cuts down to two Oh five. Terrible. Mm. I felt terrible. Can't take shots, you know? And then, uh, that's when I kind of decided, you know what? I'm just as strong as these guys hit just as hard. My cardio is better than these, these heavyweights. You know, I'm done with two Oh five. I'm 39 years old now, so I don't need to be jumping yo-yo and back down, you know, and I've had success at heavyweight. So is your career at 205 done? You're just going to stay at, at heavyweight for... Yeah. The, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not going down to 205. You know, I'm, I'm too... I was like 245 in camp sometimes. This, you know, this last camp, you know, in shape. So it's just not worth it for me. You know, I, I feel like my skills are, are better at heavyweight. 
you know, um, I've clerked on these guys. I've always had good cardio for a 205 er you know, let alone bring that to heavyweight. Um, you know, and, uh, just the guys move different at 205, all this kind of stuff. So I, I just don't see a positive of cutting weight. Uh, a lot of people are up in arms, uh, yesterday over something pertaining to this, uh, fight that you had. And I want, I want to be clear here when I say this is not so much a question, but it's more like me trying to clarify in a statement. Here's the thing. Um, a lot of people may not know this cause they're just fans of the sport and they don't know, really know, you know, how the sausage is made, but I want to let everyone know and, and feel free to back this up if you want. Uh, the, the purse numbers that get released by the commission are more often than not, when it comes to the main event, not true. Uh, the reason this is done for many years yeah. is so that, uh, you know, promoters don't want other fighters to know what you know fighters are making Ugh. and so there's like an, a promotional agreement that they release but then there's other stuff and so people were very upset over what you made and what fedor made and were tagging me saying why aren't you talking about bellator underpaying their fighters and so i just want to throw this out there feel you did yeah. not make what was put out there is that accurate no okay. no okay. i made uh significantly significantly more you know and it's yeah, and I, I you get that a lot. You know, they'll release that, and they're like, "Fatal made a hundred grand for this fight." You know, yeah. no, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be fighting if I was making that. You know, um, uh, this is a job for me. You know, and, and I'm making kind of money where it's hard to walk away from. You know, to walk into walk in a cage, especially at our level, and and how good we are, uh, and leave that money on the table. You know, so it's one of those things where um, I get asked that quite a lot, but. Um, yeah, the, the bigger bigger players in here, the champions, all that kind of stuff, you know, that's our disclosed pay. But Bellator treats us very, very well. And I know they treat Fedor yeah. even better. Uh, this is way, like, whatever you're making. I'm not asking specifically, but this is way more than yeah. what you're making in the UFC, right? Oh, yeah, like eight, nine times more. Wow. Wow, okay. So everyone could yeah. chill out. Uh, everyone was going, sending it to Jake Paul, sending it to me. I was like, guys, I mean, yeah. you're you're falling for I this. I mean, we know that. I mean, we know that. They put out numbers. and they, It's kind of the same UFC and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, um, but yeah, Bellator takes care of us. And uh, I've never been happier. And, you know, you know, I love the, just kind of the vibe over there and the people there. You know, you got to know them over these, you know, since 2017. And uh, I have nothing but great things to say uh, say about them and and I never regretted it one time coming over. Uh, how many more years do you think you have left in you? Man, just probably just a couple more, you know, um like I said I'm 39. I'm not going to be one of these guys fighting at, you know, 43 or anything like that. Um I love the sport. I love to compete. Um at the same time, I really don't even like the sport, you know. <laughs> um it, it took up a lot of my bandwidth, you know, as a, a young kid and just I'm a competitor and that's all they thought about was MMA and all that kind of stuff. And, um, that was my 40th professional fight and there's other stuff I want to do. And, but I, I'm at the top of my game right now, you know, and, um, I can still put in the work that needs to be done to be successful. And also, like I said, too, it's hard to, it's hard not, not to walk in that cage with the paycheck we're getting too. Mm -hmm. you know, um, when you are at that level, you know, if I wasn't, that would be a weird way to walk in weird headspace to be like, Hey, I, I know I didn't prepare right. And I'm going to, in there for a paycheck. That's not me. I still perform at the top, top level, you know? So, um, I've got two more fights with Bellator on my contract and reevaluate from there. Okay. So there's a chance maybe you do those two and then maybe a couple more or maybe those two and then you're done. Yeah. So my, my whole mindset, um, you know, I was in, in training and my coach, he's Brazilian Jai and Gilbert Burns came in and they know each other. And he was like, Hey, I just want to uh, share this. You know, anybody who said that it's their last fight has never won, hmm. you know, and it's a mindset. And, and I think you, you're half in half out when you come in with that mindset, you said, Hey, you know, I'm going to retire uh, on this fight and you're not all in. And so for my mindset, it's always been like, yeah, it's coming, but I'm not going to put a, specific date or fight because i think you you know that you lost 50 percent of the battle right there yeah just because you know you're done you know if you get in a hard spot are you gonna push through it or you're like hey i'm gonna be done anyway right so um uh, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be that guy i'll just have a fight and 
at one point just say, you know what? That was my last fight and I'm done. Do you know who would be next for you? Because there's no clear cut guy, right? I don't. Um, what's that? There's no like clear cut answer, right? There's no like number one contender. No, right yeah. I got, I got asked that at the press conference. You know, it's, uh, there's been a lot of recycling, yeah. a lot of rematches, right? You know, you got Linton, Vassell, and Moldovsky fighting in March. And that's the most logical if you just look on paper. But I need to kind of look and see if there any new blood. You know, I've been kind of fighting these guys over and over again. You yeah. know, so and and you know they're at the top for a reason. They keep you know if they'll lose and they'll come back and then they're on a winning streak and um, they're right back in the mix. But yeah, it's kind of one of those things. Like I said, I was like, that's the logical you know response. But I wonder if there's any new blood out there. I know uh, of someone who would uh, qualify as new blood who's out there. I mean, there's a really big name out there. This is the former, well, I not former. He is the UFC champion, in my opinion. He's Francis Ngannou. He's a free agent. Why don't we make that oh, one yeah. happen? Are they, ta- are they telling you anything about that? No, I got to ask a few times. Uh, I think Scott was talking to him, you know, and I, I was kind of saying, you know, we'll cross that bridge when it comes. He's, he's a big, scary dude, right? He's 300 pounds, cutting down. I'm a kind of hybrid heavyweight. Uh, but it's one of those things where, you know, if it does come over, I'm the champion, right? You got to fight him. And uh, I'll have the mindset that I can go in and beat him too, because, you know, you can't, you can't be a champion. You can't hold a belt, duck guys, um, you know? And so I always go in the mindset that I can beat anybody on any given night, you know, and if it's him, then so be it, you know? Um, he is a big, scary dude, big yeah. heavyweight. It's hard, yeah. you know? Um, but I think everybody does, you know, at, at top level. Um, so it's one of those things where I know, I think Scott said he was kind of talking to him, but I, I just don't know, you know, if he turned down that offer with the UFC, you know, is Bellator going to be able to touch that at all? Or is he going to go, you know, he's getting called out by Tyson Fury. Right. Is he going to go box, which I would think would be the most logical thing if, if he's looking for that kind of payday and, and whatnot. But I guess we'll just kind of cross that when he comes over. And if he does, I mean, it is, we, we're going to fight. Mm. Well, for now, you don't have to worry about that. Enjoy the victory. Great win on a great platform, great exposure for you. Uh, congrats on all the success at heavyweight and, uh, let's see how the next couple of years go for you. But for now, great talking to you. Thank you again for the time and congrats on the big win. I appreciate it, buddy. Thank you. All right. There he is. Ryan Darth Bader, the reigning defending Bellator heavyweight champion with the massive win over one Fyodor Emelianenko this past Saturday.